You know that I, I told that uh, I don't want to stay on parade, but I fucking want to stay on parade. Oh, baby! Oh, that did it for me. Hey. That did it for me, guys. I'm telling you, it did it for me. I have my... I'm ready to go. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the DMBA show. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you for that one. Oh, of course. The last... Show before the playoffs begin. Yeah, the regular season. The last show tomorrow. It all begins. Will the Nuggets stay on parade versus the LA Lakers? Today we're going to make all of our predictions. Not just who's going to win. How many games is it going to go? Who's going to be the leading scorer? How many games are there going to be Munders? We have all kinds of different things we're going to try to predict right now, so we can be on record for you to bookmark and celebrate when we're all perfectly right on every single prediction. To help me with that. Nostradamus himself, d Co. That's right, guys. I know everything, and I also know nothing. It's a wild <laughs> thing to try and figure out. doesn't make sense. Just listen, or don't. You're like Chance the Gardener. Over here, the man with the wind in his hair, Harrison Wind. I want everybody to call me out on my bad predictions this season. I want to be held accountable during yeah. these playoffs. <laughs> Please hold me accountable. <laughs> Clip it, screenshot it, tweet it at me, whatever. You know what this is? This is like on Wolf of Wall Street. Do you know the scene where he's like, I don't ask people to pick to judge me by my winners. I try to tell them to judge me by my losers because there yep. are so few. Yep. <laughs> that's what that's what Wind just gave us. By the way. I'm only making one prediction today, by the way. Nuggets to win. Okay. Well, don't spoil it. Wiz. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You don't I know thought, where he's going. I thought maybe he was Shocker. Gonna, I thought you were gonna maybe tell us that you're on lewds. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to stick with my hard drug. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'm Wall not Street. taking the Lakers. Good movie. Um, <laughs> guys, everybody, as soon as the show's over, or maybe while we're doing the show, check out Harrison's article tonight. A sneak peek behind. A little peek behind. Peek behind. The story. Uh, Jokic's pool. There was some swimming involved. There were yeah. some beverages. Wynn got, uh, got the scoop. Yeah. It's a yearly tradition, it seems like, going over to Jokic's house to watch the playing games. Uh, I would love to get in on that tradition. I, why is, haven't we why can't the, the players invite? open it up to us? They call oh, I have an answer. Yeah. <laughs> they don't like us. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> <What>? right. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a tough break for us. Um, let's get into it, guys, because I want to use... Actually, we had a, our practice today. Oh, man, nobody was at it. <laughs> we can't even go into practice notes because the guy that was at it wasn't here. Uh, let's go into expectations here for uh, each player here. And usually we start when we do these with Jokic, but I don't want to start with Jokic. I want to start with Jamal Murray because I actually think he might be the most interesting nugget going into this series. He was obviously phenomenal last year. So let's predict. What are some expectations? I'll start over here. What are expectations from you from Jamal Murray? Well, I mean, I feel like, about a week ago, I was pretty uncertain as to what we were going to get out of Jamal. But I, seeing the way that he performed over the last few games, how confident his shot is, how well he's moving, yeah. like I expect Jamal Murray to absolutely be a killer. Like just absolutely trounce the Los Angeles Lakers. I really expect big things from him. Um, not maybe not quite to the level of what he did to Utah in the bubble, but like I expect big numbers from Jamal Murray. What it would because last year was thirty two points a game like that's really high. Yeah, I I mean I I would be, I would be surprised if we didn't get minimum one forty point game. And really? Yes, I, I just think he's he's there. I think he's in absolute killer mode. I like it. I by the way I kind of agree with you that I think he's in absolute killer mode. 
What about you? What's your expectation for Jamal? My expectations are sky high. I'm with D-Line. He should have an unbelievable series based on the matchup and the opponent and just the vibe that he's been putting out there Like ever since he came back from his latest injury. I mean, he's seemed pretty locked into me uh, in games, but then at practices and stuff. And um, he's like shifted into that playoff mode, I feel like. The Lakers have nobody that can stop him. Nobody. Gabe Vincent, there's been a lot of chatter. There's been a <laughs> lot of chatter about Gabe Vincent. A lot of talk it's about him. It's a hilarious him name as to be the guy. X Factor in this series. It's a hilarious guy to be like, oh, we got to stop Jamal. We'll bring in Gabe Vincent. You yeah. know? Jamal I mean, Murray does look, not see Gabe Vincent. He doesn't see him. He, he does do a good job of pressuring him. Like, one of the things that I think is important in this game, if I and I don't know if it can work in the series because I don't know if the Lakers have enough people, but I do think pressuring Jamal Murray and trying to wear him down is a key. Absolutely. And he at least plays that Faku style or Jose Alvarado style of, all right, I'm going to get into you at half court and really just make you work for every inch. Even though you get blown by, it's like it's still tiring. That is definitely something they can do. And, and it is something that can be effective. But just throughout a series... He's not a defender that can slow down Jamal Murray. He's just not. He doesn't have the size and the strength. So I expect Jamal Murray to average 30 points per game in this series. I do. Really? Yeah. Over 30. I like it. He, he should. I agree with you guys, though, that, you know, Murray missed all that time, and he didn't come back for that long, and you're worried, like, is there going to be a rhythm? He looked very rhythmed in the go. games he came back. He was rhythmic. He was very rhythmic, I would say. <laughs> and, but in all sincerity, he that's the thing. Like his three point shot yeah. looked confident, aggressive, you know, no hesitation. Oh, and he was knocking them down. I really in hindsight, it does look like and we know this to be true, but you really could see it that Denver was being extra cautious with the injury. It wasn't like uh, oh, are we concerned? That's a lot of time to miss. It was like, hey man, we need this guy a hundred percent more than anybody on the roster, he should be very rested. Yeah. He should be rested, he although he be. seems to twist something. Every three or four games, yeah. So hopefully that we, that trend is bucked, and we sort of just like go through. Like I don't want to talk about Jamal Murray's legs anymore. I just don't. Here's here's my take on Jamal and what my expectations are. I think he has to set the tone for this team right away. And I've talked about Murray's had great game ones, fifty piece in the bubble, you know, or forty five piece. I think it wasn't a game one in the bubble. He's had some monster performances even against Minnesota last year. But not always great series in round one. Not, not always his peak. I think that this series, they need him right from the jump to be incredible, to carry him, and to deliver the first punch. Yep. If I had my pick of how game one goes, I would say it's a Murray game. Absolutely. That, that would be best case scenario for Denver. And I think there's a chance it happens because an advantage to the Nuggets playing the Lakers in round one, a positive, I think, to Nuggets playing the Lakers is that Playing the Lakers is going to focus this team in a way that playing some other opponents might not have. Like, I think the Nuggets still would have beaten the Pelicans in four or five games, but I don't know if they would have been locked into that playoff mindset from game one. Against the Lakers, I think they will be. Yeah. Like, that's just a matchup. The attention on it, the amount it's talked about, it's going to feel like a bigger series than just a first-round series. And for that, I think the Nuggets and Jamal Murray – start this series very focused. So I like this theory that you're almost implying here, which is maybe Murray's not a slow starter. It's just that, as we know to be the truth, Murray needs pressure. And is the first round pressure? Not as much as the second. Is the second round pressure? Not as much as the third. So there might be something to this, and yet the matchup of the Lakers throws that out. Doesn't matter first, second, third. It's the Laker matchup. Yeah. You got to go. And by the way, you get past that one, you get either the Suns or the Wolves, Murray ain't sleeping on that series either. So there right. could be a thing where it's like the whole team is locked in and dialed in, including Jamal. Tonight, I hope it, or tomorrow, I hope it's a Jamal night. Let's Man, go to tonight. I got a little worried I know, I for got, a second. I got a little nervous, too. I uh, got ahead of myself. <laughs> Michael Porter, start over here this time. Expectation for him in the series. Man, um, I mean, especially with the news that came out today that his brother's going to jail for six years. Combined with what's happening with his other brother getting banned from the league. Honestly, man, like I wouldn't be upset at Michael Porter if he does not have a good series. Like, I think like that's something that I could see happening and be like, all right, like that just kind of is what it is. Um, 
I think there's a very good chance he does focus and lock in and, you know, plays like he does. Uh, he's a really important player for the Nuggets this series. He's He's got to be that outlet. He's got to be able to, like, score in a variety of ways. And, um, I mean, against the Lakers, their defense, they're not the best defense. They have to focus in on, like, key points. Michael Porter, I don't feel like, is at the top of their scouting report. Interesting. So I feel like there are going to be pockets, and there's going to be room for him to score a lot. What do you think, Dylan? Yeah, I mean, you know, like when your heart hurts, it helps to be like aerobic to run around to sort of like get your blood pumping. I don't know that it helps to be like your finesse part of your game, like when mm. your your heart is hurting. I think that he'll probably want he'll like probably be running around a lot. I I can't imagine trying to play under these circumstances like you ever have anything that's just like on your mind and it's like truly hurts your heart and like every moment that you're not doing something you are taken back to it because it's visceral it's like real and it's not just like you're worried about something like i so i have a hard time imagining him being like locked in mentally but i do see him like getting a lot of rebounds and like you know sort of running and like trying to like work out that feeling in his chest. But I mean, like I'm with Wynn, like how can you expect anything from Michael Porter Jr.? It's honestly thing, like a huge, it's a massive storyline that's been thrown into this series. It's I feel massive. Like. And it's, you know, it, it's, there are many times throughout any time it, when you're following any team where you're reminded of the, the big life that exists outside of it. This is obviously way bigger than basketball. So, I mean, we're going to learn a lot about Michael Porter Jr., frankly. We're going to kind of see, you know, where his head is at, where his heart is at, where, you know, and I I don't know. We've seen him play under duress before. I, I don't immediately remember, like, how he performed, but, like, I'm just imagining for myself, like, what, what that would try and what that would feel like, and I, I don't expect big things from him. The only thing I'll say about this, because I... Maybe it's a hot take, and I'm not. Look, who knows, right? This is, we, we analyze basketball, trying to analyze this. Who knows? But this stuff happens more than you think in the NBA, for sure. This is a weird example of a high-profile emotional story that is public and everybody knows about it. Right. But players, there's a lot of nobody knows this, but players going through a divorce right now, right, or right, players, right. you know, mom or whatever just died or what have you. Luca last year, it was in the news, but you know, sort of the lawsuit against his mom and right. different things, and right. he misses the playoffs last year, and you know, maybe that plays a part of it. So I think this stuff actually goes through NBA teams more than you think. Just just the way it happens to everybody's life, like people go through things in their life. I think it that it very well could impact him, and it very well could impact him in a major way. I think it probably will impact him less. And even though I think your logic is sound about, because I actually like it, you're right, R visceral things. Yeah. It does make sense. But I think for, for me personally, and I'm only projecting myself here, basketball as a game takes my mind off of things. Sure. And it's not even the running, the jumping, the physicality, just being in the game. And I think, you know, maybe there's something to that. You talked about it. I don't know if his focus will be there. It's entirely possible that he will be hyper-focused. True. Because it's the opposite of like, oh, man, I've been in my head this whole time. But when I'm on the court, I'm just so present. And it could be that. I think that he might play well. And I think he might get more opportunities. Because I could foresee as the – if you're the Lakers – the first item of business is how do we slow Jokic? Do we slow Jokic? How do we slow him? And I think that there is probably some, with how well he cooked last year, Jokic cooked last year, a we can't just let Jokic do things. We have right. to aggressively trap. And if you, you do that, you get open shots. And you could argue or you could see a scenario where he actually does something, like he actually is able to rise to the occasion like as a tribute to his brothers. Could like, be. There, there are times where, you know, like, Athletes go out after a, father, a, a parent has died or something, and they actually achieve some of their best heights. So I, that's what I, my largest thought is that, yeah, we're going to learn a lot about him. Yeah. We're going to see yeah. what, he's, what he's made of. Let's go quickly to Aaron Gordon. What are your expectations? Um, is there a specific expectation? I, my expectation is that he's going to like dominate the paint when he's in there at backup center. Really? Yeah. Even again... Uh, if he's matched up against LeBron in those minutes? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's what he has to do. Um, like, that's a big battleground in this series. And Aaron Gordon had a quote today at Nuggets practice where he was just like, 
so locked in. He said, our goal is to win back-to-back championships. That's our only goal, 16 games, 16 more wins. Like His focus, I really feel like, is there. At practice yesterday, he stayed, must have been at least 30 minutes later than anybody else did on the practice court, just shooting around and getting some work in. I feel like he's laser focused right now, and um, he's just got to be a bully this series. Um, I I feel like he's got to be. I was going to say the Nuggets' third best player, but he could be their fourth best player, and they could win the series easily. Okay. Easily, man, you're really feeling it. What about you, D line? What is your expectation for him? I mean, I have high, really high expectations of Aaron Gordon. Also, like, I really think that. Um, He's going to lock in on LeBron defensively. I think he's, I mean, I don't think he's not going to shut him down or anything, but like he's going to make it more difficult for LeBron James and really anybody else I think would in the playoffs. Uh, like he's enough. That's like this, this type of player that um, Aaron Gordon specifically does well against. Not that you can, you know, we're talking about LeBron James, but um, I just have high expectations from like hearing that, uh, interview that he had the the expectations that he had for himself like it's just like they're not they're not messing around and Aaron Gordon has gotten meaner and Aaron Gordon has got more physical and Aaron Gordon has tasted success and it it really suits him (laughs) so (laughs) I I think like I just (laughs) see this dominating style play I mean I see out I see finale oops I I mean I just I just think he's gonna do his thing yeah another thing is I think there's a chance he takes up some of the Bruce Brown bulldog trash talking mantle. I could see that. He got into it with LeBron last playoff series. That's true. That was a thing. He got into it with Wemby a couple games ago for some reason. He got into it with Russell Westbrook. Are we? I think there was something in the the Grizzlies game too last Are we sleeping on Aaron Gordon as the Nuggets bully? Getting that, he got that dog in him. He's starting (laughs) to come out. (laughs) I just think like. If anybody on the Nuggets starting five is going to bring that, it's probably him. Oh, my God. You're right. I like this. I love this. I have my first hot take prediction of the show. My first hot take. Let's see. Aaron Gordon will shoot 40% or better from three. What? And will make more than one a game. It's going to be like 1.2 a game. It's not going to be a lot. He's going to shoot four of ten. Well, I said more than one. (laughs) Kale gives out five peppers. He gives out five peppers. (laughs) Look, man, AG can lock in. First of all. Ag on rest, I think, is a big diff- is a big deal, especially for yeah. his shooting, and he has not shot the ball well all year. It doesn't matter; it's not his job. You get to the playoffs. It's like Yoke; he shot thirty three percent from three, and that's fine. That's regular season playoffs. You got to shoot better than that. I think Ag in round one is going to shoot better, and also I think that it's just going to be a big part of the Lakers' plan is oh, yeah. leave him wide open, and I think he's going to be prepared. Men- you said he stayed late tonight. It's like. There's a mental, like, I, this is what I got to do, lock in, and you just do a little bit better. So I'll say he shoots, yeah, like, I don't know, six of, you know, 15 or something. Like, I don't know what that number Somebody would be. That Somebody check that math. Somebody check that math. Do you of know 14, what he shot maybe? in the playoffs last just year from three? Of three of 11 of in the Lakers 10. series, I know. Overall, he was 39%. Ayo. So he shot a lot better other than in that conference finals one. I think this one. But he though, also shot a lot better during the regular season last year. No, there you go. <laughs> That's my first hot take. All right, let's take a break on the other side. We'll wrap up with KCP and, of course, Jokic. Guys, we're here in the Toyota Lounge. Yes, we are. You are uh, chatting in the Toyota chat. Toyota, your front range stores are excited to begin their new partnership with DNVR. Toyota, the official vehicle of DNVR. Miroslav coming into town. I'm going to take him on a ride in the old Toyota Highlander. Whoa. (laughs) Take him up to the mountains, man. Maybe do a little off-roading. He's going to be like, this is way better than my Yugo. (laughs) (laughs) Not gonna let him drive it though, man. I rode don't with, I rode with no, him. Don't, don't, don't no let him drive it. He is not yeah. touching he my car. He might cars. get pulled over for going too slow. <laughs> also, no car is safe enough. <laughs> <laughs> no car is safe enough. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we love Miroslav. We both we can't wait for him to be here. <laughs> there are the sixteen seat. different hybrid vehicles to choose from across the Toyota fleet. They got the Tundra I Force Max Hybrid. Uh, Toyota SUVs, tons to choose from as well. RAV4, Grand Highlander, 4Runner, of course. Visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you. AutoNation, Toyota, Arapaho in Centennial, Corwin, Toyota in Boulder, Groove, Toyota in Littleton, Mount States, Toyota in Denver, Stevenson, Toyota East in Aurora, Stevenson, Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of the Denver Nuggets. Also, Bet365, did you guys know the Nuggets? Uh, do you know what the line is for game one? 
I don't. Give it to us. Uh, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, it's at home, right? <laughs> let me, I just got to fact check. Is it at home? He's talking. He's just talking. Yeah, it through. I just got to work it yeah. through. Kale, you home. know where the game's going to be played tomorrow, is it? <laughs> it's at it's at, it's at at Ball Arena. Okay. At home. That's the first fact. Nicole Jokic playing. Yeah, he's, he's active. Jokic okay. is in. Uh, anything else I need to know? Any, any big Nuggets, factors? Nuggets, two seed. Lakers, seven seed. <laughs> Okay. Nuggets. Nuggets coming minus, off the championship. Nuggets minus six and a half. Nuggets minus seven. Woo! Hey, that's good stuff right there. You didn't there. give me all the info, Woo! clearly. Once he, had, once he knew where the game was, <laughs> he I told in. you that uh, Jamal Murray is also playing. Oh, minus seven. Oh, seven. Oh, Nug- yeah, Nuggets seven. Nuggets realize. plus seven. <laughs> um, yeah, it's minus seven. You can bet that on the Bet365 app, Never Ordinary. Use the QR code there on the screen. Download the app as well. Must be 21 plus physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we are back. Second segment here. KCP, I'm going to go back over to you to go, go first here. What are your expectations for him? I feel like we talk about how many guys like going against the Lakers. Like if we ranked who likes going against the Lakers the most. I think Jamal might be number one. KCP is probably number two, though. Yeah. This is the one of your one of the only takes that I'll ever listen to of yours, which I think was dead on, is that KCP is a nugget. He's a nugget, man. He's, he's not a start, Laker. He's especially not a Laker. Yeah, he's not a this he's not the, a wizard. He might be a wizard. <laughs> this is the upset of the century. I thought for sure you win a title with the La- even though it turns out it's a Mickey Mouse title, nobody cares. That's, the bubble why, that's count. part of it, yeah. Um but there's something so fantastic about somebody that's been given everything and then comes to the world with humility, like Josh Kroenke. He's oh, really? Humble guy. <laughs> that was a turn. From very was, he posh audience, beginnings, okay. and he actually is a very solid human being. KCP played for the Lakers, the dark side, the evil, yeah. and has then gone back to the rest of the league, has emerged with humility, yeah. hard work. He's like... He should be like D'Angelo Russell or Kyle Kuzma, who's forever tainted. But, but KCP the, the is difference just, is KCP didn't start his career with the Lakers. I know, but he was exposed to it. Like you know, like that's a, true. Like he radiation. Was he had to really uh, cut his what's he, cut like, his teeth. Cut his teeth in Detroit. That's tough. I, usually, you lose your teeth in Detroit. Uh, but the point is, is that he. I really like how he has turned into a nugget at his core and i think he really enjoys beating the lakers i think it's like cool for him to be like man you hollywood fools i can't believe i was associated with you guys um i expect big things from him as well like i think his his three-point shot is going to be pure i think he's going to be uh just shutting down delo in a way that is uh going to be comical and we're going to laugh about like to talk about the bruce brown role um i think his steals are going to be high i i just i see um an absolutely locked best version of KCP upon the horizon, and I can't wait to see it. What do you think? I just think KCP is a machine and a robot. Hell yeah. And he's just going to be exactly what we expect him to be. Now, what about this? He's got a guard. Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, you know, he's got to be the perimeter shutdown. Last, last year, D'Angelo Russell had a horrible series. We talked about the impact Bruce Brown had, but let's be honest, KCP also it probably had the greater impact there. Does he have the same thing? Is De'An- can he shut D'Angelo Russell to the same degree? This is the first team. <laughs> okay. This is the first team. All right. He absolutely can. KCP's defense, it's been way better this season than it was last season. Last season, I feel like, if you remember, Aaron Gordon was you know the Nuggets, the talk of the Nuggets defense. This yeah, year, it's right. been KCP. So I love this team. I feel like he's been a better defender this season. And, um, yeah, he's, he absolutely should shut D'Angelo Russell down. We'll go to the big fella now, Nikola Jokic. And this one's an interesting one. Can he be better than he was last year? Honest question, Wind. Can he be better than he was last year? He yes, was, he can. Whoa. Will he? Potentially. 28 points a game, 14 and a half rebounds, 12 assists. <laughs> That's so <laughs> stupid. And by the way, he shot 47% from three, 50% from the field. I mean, I think it was probably the best series of his life. Game one against the Lakers is still maybe, the best in game. my mind, the most iconic game of Nicole Jokic's career. 
can he be, be be better? Yes, because the answer is always yes. He can always be better. <laughs> it just, just is. Miroslav's rule of Jokic. Yes, he can be better. <laughs> he can be more efficient. Like he can have more control over the game. He can be a better defender than he even was last season. Um, but I expect him to to be at around the level he was in that series last year. It is funny, D-Line, because he played uh, 42 minutes a game to put those numbers up last year, which is a lot of minutes, 28, 14 and a half, and 12. This year in the regular season, in 37 minutes, five fewer minutes, he averaged 29, 12, and 9. So it's almost like he was on pace for those numbers in the three matchups with the Lakers this year in the regular season, and that's regular season intensity. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm going to – here's the hot take. I don't think it's going to have a better series – like I, I, that's about the best series that I can imagine him playing. It was about perfect. And more, moreover, I just feel like he's going to get a lot of help from Jamal Murray. He's going to get a lot of help from Aaron Gordon, from KCP. Like he won't have to have a better series. I hope he doesn't have to. How many minutes did he average in that series? Forty-two. There's no way he plays more minutes. No. Well, or is there? Yeah. Was there any? There was no overtimes in that series last year. Was there no overtimes? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I don't think so either. Damn, I, for the closest sweep ever, there were no overtimes. That is weird, man. Well, with how game close one it was. was a blowout, and then there was no. Another... They were all close. Uh, what? No, they were all. <laughs> they were was... very close, Harrison. The Lakers actually should have won all four. <laughs> yeah, they were that close. <laughs> they were that close. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe if they played Max Christie a little more, they could have gotten the game. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think it's hard because of how well he shot the ball and everything else. It is hard to envision him being better in the series. That's what I'm but saying, man. Thing. But he be, but he can be better in other ways. And I do think that there is probably a factor of you lost this team eight, nine times, whatever it's been in a row, including in the playoffs last year. I think that they probably view it as they have a Jokic problem, and you have to adjust. And I think that this might be. I would not be surprised if this was more of a passing yoke than a scoring yoke. It could be both. But if last year he averaged twenty nine or 20, whatever I just said. This year might be more of a 25 a game, but it's the same impact, the same level of impact. The team's so overloaded on him, and of course he knows what to do with it. Yeah. I will say, if you get to the staggered, like, if, I think, are they going to try Jackson Hayes? Are they going to bring him out? Because to me, I if you told so. me Jackson Hayes was going to guard Jokic for five minutes a game, I'm going to say, okay, his numbers are going to go up. It's actually it's going to be 40 points a game. They don't, they don't have another big man to play. I think you have to tie Anthony Davis to him. I, that's, that's what I think. Yeah, They're going to move him off. You're going to get Rui adjustment. Well, sure, but I just mean he, Anthony Davis needs to be on the court. <laughs> Poor Rui Hachimura. If you put Jackson Hayes on the court oh, without sure. Anthony Davis, like you might as well put a cone up and it's just true, say, hey, I don't true. know. We'll, we'll see what happens. So I think he has a, a pretty monster series. Um, and then the bench. We'll just log it all together. Your expectations for the bench, Harrison? Hi. I think the bench is going to be good in this series and good in the playoffs. I do. Aaron Gordon at backup center is a lineup that – Cooked in the playoffs last year and cooked in the regular season when Denver went to it. Every single time, pretty you're, much. You're probably going to Murray and Aaron Gordon. Murray and Aaron Gordon. And then Gordon. Reggie, uh, Casey, or Reggie, P. Watt, and CB. I don't think Reggie plays that many minutes with Murray. You think he is solely the stagger, so it's KCP. So you're going Murray, KCP, and Aaron Gordon. That's what I would think. Or that, Murray, Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon. Could oh. Ian, that both, yeah, I gotta think. I got to think that Reggie Jackson plays all his minutes with Nicole Jokic, or like the huge majority He's of He's just them. the Murray rest is all right. he is. The first sub, yeah. you know, he, in that yeah. first late first quarter is Murray for Reggie Jackson. Yes. And then Jamal Murray comes back in to start the second quarter. Yep. That's what I would think is the move for Michael Malone, but hmm. I don't know. I think, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if you give him a Michael Porter, maybe it's only in the second half do you go that deep and you end up bringing in the third starter. But yeah. that is decent spacing. Honestly, Aaron Gordon and Murray, you know, that maybe is the, fun, the start of your action. And then Michael Porter in one quarter, Christian Brown in the other. It's not like super spacing, but it's not terrible either. Yeah. So I think that, and, that could work. And this Nuggets bench, it the personnel on it, the skill sets there, it's designed to work in the playoffs. When those two guys, Christian Brown, Peyton Watson in particular, are playing next to better offensive players yeah. than they did in the regular season. It's not built for the regular season when Michael Mullen doesn't stagger. By the way, you know, like we know this from even just talking to Cal and hearing his philosophy, both on the record and, and you know maybe even just behind closed doors when you're trying to get a sense of what a guy values. It's, hey, 
oh, this you know might in the play, in the regular season or whatever this or that, but like this is what matters. Yep. These are the guys, and now you're at that point. It's like okay, everybody's there. There's a chance for it to happen. That's D line. Think about that defensive lineup. Jamal Murray. If you go with KCP, Christian Brown, Peyton Watson, and Aaron Gordon, four of all four of your best defenders on the court, and even if you swap KCP for Michael Porter, That's you a still scary lineup. you still have Christian Brown. Ooh. Peyton Watson and Aaron Gordon as three defenders. That's a really good Ooh. defensive lineup. That's the main the main point here is that we are not in the regular season anymore and regular season lineups are no longer a factor and you don't have to rely on your bench to be your everything. You can have specialists. You can have Christian Brown and Peyton Watson come in and focus exclusively on defending and allow Jamal Murray and Jokic at times and like Wynn says, you're better offensive players to carry that side of the ball. And we've just seen the effort and we've seen the um, fervor that both have been playing with of late. And it's just that type of stuff translates. Like effort translates to the playoffs so well. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can look at that's just noise in the regular season that can be affected by a great number of, of factors. But like just playing hard, playing smart, playing tough and uh, hard-nosed basketball is something that both of those guys excel in. They've been excelling in it lately, and the playoffs are where that works. And, dude, I, I mean, I don't expect either of those players to put up big offensive numbers, but P. Swat, or Swatson's going to be on display. Christian Brown, Browntown's going to be, you know, uh, defensive Browntown is going to be... Bustling. Hustling, bustling. Like, I, uh, I mean, I just... I'm very excited for what this is going to look like. I kind of I like your take about the bench, though. I do think there's a really good. I mean, we've seen it whenever you put two starters on the court as opposed to three, but if you are or opposed to one, but if you put three on the court, you know, Michael Porter, Jamal, and Aaron Gordon, then Christian Brown and and Peyton Watson, their role becomes so perfect for their skill set, and I think that you were right. I think we will see that on the other side. Now, those are the players. We're going to run through some fun ones, including how many techs are going to be thrown out in the series. As text well as or text. Text. Oh, okay. Technical oh like how, how many times will Nikola Jokic text the team? <laughs> no, no. Well, if, 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 if it's even once, we can just call off the playoffs. And just give Game the with largest margin of victory. And also, will the fan base's confidence rise or fall at during the series? Ooh. Will we come out of this higher or lower at the end of it? We'll get to all of that. Holy smokes. Guys, make sure <laughs> to pick up some Miller Lite for the playoffs for this weekend. Uh, Miller Lite. Playoffs is Miller time. I mean, Murray time, <laughs> which is also Miller time. I know. Ironic, They're both right? the same thing. Yeah. Uh, it's the beer that strips away everything you don't need and holds on to what matters most. It's a light beer that tastes like beer, less filling, only 96 calories as well. Miller Lite tastes great. Easy to drink. Keeps it simple. Good ingredients. 96 calories. The original light beer since 19. 19- 75 the perfect beer to drink if you're just hanging out with some friends uh, going to a bar watching a game uh, hanging out in the backyard for whatever occasion miller light is the perfect drink and it tastes good not going to fill you up a lot either times change but you can always enjoy the great taste of miller light tastes like miller time to get miller light delivered right to your door visit millerlight.com slash dnvr or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories per 12 ounces. Also, check out Red Hawk Roofing. If you have any roofing needs, home or business, they're the best at what they do. Quality materials, decades of experience, quick response time. They are Colorado's best estimators and contractors. And they'll be at the bar probably for uh, the Lakers series. They love it here. Uh, They're hanging out, uh, cheering on the Colorado sports teams with everybody. So uh, hit them up. Also, they will give you a free upgrade to a hail impact resistant shingle if you do business with them. If you're looking for a new roof over your home or business, be sure to check out redhawkroofing.com. Tell them DNVR sent you. Do you have the thing I sent you, Kale? I'm going to take an intermission here. We're going to take a five-second break from Nuggets here. Andre Drummond has arrived for the game tonight, guys. This is an M elimination game. So how do you show up? Hall of Famer? What is the the future Hall of Famer showing up to an elimination game? What's the fit look like, Gail? What? What? Uh, Uh, I got heat by a thousand tonight. I don't know what you guys have. 
Is, is, this the, uh, is this the next development or the next evolution of LeBron's suit with a pair of shorts? No, but well, you know, this is how Dwayne Wade got inducted to the Hall of Fame. He had a sleeveless suit shirt. Uh, it, it's quite the look. Anyway. Is, he, is this like one of these things where... Is there like another Magic Mike movie coming out? That he's like, that that he's Mike that, or he's like being paid by, as a publicity stunt? It could be. Andre Drummond's pretty pretty jacked though. I'm not gonna lie. It's a pretty he's pretty jacked. He's a strong guy. Well, this is the, this thing like how could you make muscles look bad <laughs> like this? <laughs> the tie has a zipper. The tie has a zipper. <laughs> the tie has a zipper. <laughs> These are bi- the worst part about it, it's not just like this is this is like um, yes. this is like I'm in on it. Actually, you know what? Bulls by a thousand. This is like sexy newsy, sexy schoolboy with a like a little dash <laughs> of S and M. Sexy schoolboy <laughs> trademark it. Hashtag trademark sexy schoolboy. You dude. know, what? let's not trademark it. You know, sound like that guy with the island. Let's go now. <laughs> I, if you guys ask, where, where the, I just like anybody with an island. Oh, okay. uh, if you guys ask, was the Nuggets fan base more or less confident or neutral after the Wolf series? I think it was probably neutral. Yeah. Because the last three games were all close. You know, Denver had to eke that it was out. The actually close series we played. It was after game one of the Sun series where the confidence rose. We all talk about it. That's the nut time when we looked around and we're like, hey, they might actually do this thing. But this is the Lakers series, so do you think by the end of this series, then the fan base's confidence will go up, down, or stay where it is? Up. This will be an encouraging series. Yes, because I believe, uh, not, I don't want to tip anything. Don't give away your predictions. Based on the things that I think will happen, <laughs> I believe anytime you're able to have success against a, that particular franchise, it fills Nuggets fans with joy and hubris and all the best and worst things about what it is to be a fan. Yeah, dude, like I, yes, they're going to feel great after the series. Th- that would feel great. Yes. It would be great to have the confidence we had as a fan base after like game two of the Lakers series. Yes. It would be great to have that immediately. You don't have to wait till the conference finals. Just be like, oh, they're doing it again. Yeah. I think I'm with D-Line. Um, I think me and him see the series going in, in a similar way. And um, I mean, like what I've just been thinking about over the last couple of days is, you know, you got to put all the narratives, all the noise, all the extra stuff off the court to the side and just trust what's happened on the court. Trust what this Nuggets team did in the playoffs last year and what they've done this year and compare that to who they're playing. And if you actually just talk about the basketball, which is what this series will be about in the end, I think Nuggets fans will feel very encouraged about how it ends up. I think neutral. I think neutral. I think it's too early and there's too many different types of teams. And look, here's the thing that we know. Denver did not want any part of Phoenix last year, and then they spanked them. Denver didn't want any part of the Lakers, and then they swept them. Denver didn't play anybody. I think that there might be a similar thing. Denver might be in a lose-lose where if you beat L.A. this year and you make it look easy, it's like, that was the Lakers. They weren't any good. You know, like it'll immediately swing to like, well, that was a seven C. They Gabe Vincent, he sucks. Yeah, yeah, they had to count go to Gabe Vincent. Spencer did what he worst buyout of all time. <laughs> exactly. What are you talking so about? So I have a feeling that that would more likely be the narrative than the other way around. All right. But what if go ahead. you don't think if it's a sweep, Nuggets fans feel better about this team than they do right now? Because I think a sweep against the Lakers, like, Everybody thinks we're cruising to the championship again, better than sixteen and four. I think a sweep, yes. I think a sweep, okay. yes. Okay. I think a five game series neutral. Okay. Six game series neutral. Um, who will get techs in this series? Who do you think will get a technical foul? Do you think this will be a technical foul type of series? Um, I'll tell you who gets a technical foul in this series. And it could be multiple people. Multiple people? If you think, a lot of people will get one. <sighs> Probably Mike Malone. <laughs> probably he's probably the money line favorite yeah he, i would say if you get a tech you better be in denver because i think there's nothing lakers fans would like more than a tech a michael malone tech on, in in 
whatever it's called, crypto. I don't even feel like Lakers fans hate the Nuggets. They just hate Michael Malone. I because I was saying this online the other night, they wouldn't dare talk shit about Jokic. I know. <laughs> it's like it, this is again like what we do with Patrick. Mahomes. They are so we talk about his wife by <laughs> Michael Malone, man. Everything Michael Malone says, yeah. and I know this because I tweet it out, and then I hear everybody's response. Everything Michael Malone amazing. has said this week. Lakers fans have taken offense to. It's beautiful. Everything. Yeah. He's just listing off facts. We beat them eight straight times. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> we'll see you in. Yeah, yeah, We're great. the reigning champs. Oh, that's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> so great. The Lakers are 17 time reigning champs. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, we won the most recent tournament in season. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually, if anybody's rating chance, it's the Lakers, really. Yeah. Nuggets have nothing to lose they in the series. They hate Michael the Malone chance. more than anybody. They yeah. really do. Um, well, who, will, who will make a name for themselves in the series? Will, will anyone make a name? You know, there's a series. It's a breakout performance. And oh, this could yeah. be on either side. You can go to the Lakers side if you should so choose. I think it's Peyton Watson. It is Peyton Watson. That's the answer. I think Peyton Watson becomes a national storyline throughout this series because I think there is going to be a game that the Nuggets win where he has four or five blocks. And doing that in the playoffs, if one or two of those come against LeBron James or Anthony Davis in a big moment, and we all we already know all of Peyton Watson's blocks are highlight-level plays. Like, they're all momentum-changing plays. Um, I think he's going to have one of those games. And, I mean... You got the the story storyline with him that interwines with everything. He's from Los Angeles. He grew up around the Lakers. Like it just seems like it's lining up for that. That's the right answer. Though for one reason, like everybody else has kind of made a name for themselves at one point or another. Christian Brown made a name for himself in that he got onto the national. He's eligible though. He is. El he could elevate his name, but I mean. Peyton Watson is the only like truly unknown guy as far as the national um, focus is concerned. And he absolutely could come in, swat three, four shots in a game. And like when I mean, I, I feel like when I are exactly locked up. We're, on we're locked in right now. I know, man. dude. I'm, are we the new? Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I was going to say, uh, but <laughs> I just I think that that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to have a game where you're like, holy, you know, like a big block. Yeah. And people notice that it's that that's the playmaking on defense that people notice. I'll make I agree with you guys. I think Piwat is the right pick. If you have to pick here, I'll make the case for Christian. You know, he's a heck of a player. He's a heck of a low mistake player. I think he could make a big impact. We already know that whenever he has good games, the other fan base hates it. So. There's almost more of a hatred factor when Christian Brown is messing things up than when uh, P. Watt is. I think that he's going to be left wide open from three, and his three shot has looked really good in the last 15, 20 games, whatever it's been. I think there is a chance that there is a game in this series where Christian Brown is left open for like an entire half and hits three or four threes. Yeah. And it's the different, and the game is wide open, and the Lakers fans are looking there going, this guy. Hit four threes? It's like, yeah, you left him wide open in the corner, and he was just sitting there waiting for him. I could yeah. see that happening in addition to the defensive impact. Um, what about this? What do you think will be the largest margin of victory in the series? Last year, if you recall, closest sweep in NBA history. None of the games, let's see, 11 points, I yep, think, was the close. biggest. Pretty 11 close. points was the biggest. Everything else, six, five, and two. What will be the largest margin of victory this year? I'll say about 15. And that's going to be in game one tomorrow night. You think that you're feeling really good about game one? Yeah. Okay. I am. I think the Nuggets are going to come out like like they did in game one of the playoffs last year. I kind of do. That's my gut feeling right now. 15 points and just like, for an Look, example, I like 120-105 kind of game. Sure. If, if we remember game one against the Lakers last season, it would have been like a 15 to 20 point win. And then the really adjustment happened. And the Nuggets, like, <laughs> stopped playing, and then it became a closer game. But yeah. I think the Nuggets take game one, and I, I, I th think they take it kind of easily. What do you think is the biggest margin of victory in I the I mean, series? it's double digits for sure. Even last year, 12, 11 I'll point. say 12, 12 points. So you think, like, last year then, they're all pretty close. There's no, I mean, like... This is, like, what it's been. with the, the, This season has... The, the Nuggets won by 8, they won by 12, they won by 11. It's, just like, all right in there. Um 
12 feels right. I'm, but, it, you know, there is a real chance that the Lakers get demoralized and one of these games, like, really goes on tilt. Um, so, you know, like, especially if, if the Lakers get to a point where they feel like they can, it doesn't matter what they do, Jokic and the Nuggets have an answer for it, it could, it could get ugly. It really could get ugly. But you're not necessarily predicting that. If it's I'm not. Out. I mean, like, listen, I, you know, anything can happen. We'll see what happens. It's just, to me, th- those are like a 12 point game. Like, I see most of the games being like 10, 12 points, like, which in my eyes is a blowout. I'm going to go ahead and say I think there's one blowout in the series. I think the rest of the games are either super close or marginally close. 10 points being like eight, you know, eight point game, but it was, you know, down the stretch, it was just free throws or what have you. I think that we could see games like that for the most part, but I think there's one game that is like a 20-point butt whooping. I don't know if it's game one like you do. The closeout game? Maybe it's the closeout game. It could be the closeout game. I mean, I feel like more than ever these last few years, that closeout game, there's a potential for it to get into blowout territory. LeBron last year, I think, was so motivated by not getting swept, not even losing the series. It was like, don't get swept. And he honestly had one of the best halves of his career where you could tell he left it all on the court. And Denver still won that one. I don't know if you do that. Say it goes five and you're coming back to Denver down 3-1 and you've been dominated for most of the series. That, to me, would be like I would feel good about a 25-point win. Like Denver is going to run these poor fools off the court, and if they get a 10-point lead at half, they're winning by 25 in the second. So I can see that. I see the series going. Nuggets win game one pretty easily. Game two is close. Just, Just like last year. Yeah. And then game three really decides how long the series goes. Okay. There you go. Um, let's get one more in here. Will Jokic have another buzzer beater? By my account, buzzer beater can be a shot clock buzzer beater or end a game, end a quarter, any of that. Last year, I think he had three. I think he had three of them because he had the game one, he had the one over LeBron, and then the closeout <laughs> really was the shot that ended the entire series. The most beautiful thing ever. He had three that I would consider buzzer beaters. Do you think he has any of those? We can call them backbreakers. I don't know what you want. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he has a chance a, for one every quarter with how so, yeah, his rotation it's is. It's such a specific thing. Um, but it can even be shot clock. You know, it's like shot clock, late game, good defensive possession. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably. He'll, probably, right he'll, he'll probably have I'm one. Sure. Like, yeah. He'll probably have at least one shot where the Lakers and their fans go, oh, my God. Like, if he I, hits one in game one, I honestly think it might be the most demoralizing thing that totally. could happen. If he hits one of those shots, like a Sambor shuffle with two minutes to go in the game that just basically clinches it, I honestly think the Lakers would be like, we can't. This I is think he honestly much. should try to set the tone of the series with a Sambor shuffle. What do you mean? First play? First play. <laughs> That's not a first play kind of move. But then imagine if he hit it, though. The Lakers would be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we all know the Sambor only comes at the exact moment. It's I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Never before. Um, One fun one before we take a break. Will the crowd at any point chant, who's your daddy? The Nuggets crowd, I should specify. Yes, before (laughs) game one starts. That's what I said, too. (laughs) Do you think this is going to be a... During the the, the player announcements for the Lakers, the crowd will 1 million percent start chanting, who's your daddy? It's about when it's going to happen. I don't love that. It's what's going to happen. You might be Love right. it or hate it. I like, like it more in, run a, from it. <laughs> in a like fourth quarter, Denver's up 15. And like it's, you know, I, I like it more as a punctuation than as a preview. I don't know what to tell you, sir. It's what's going to happen. I agree. But I'm just saying, like, do you think there's anything weird about that? The energy of before the games even started? Because if to me, who gets more amped up from that? Denver or the, or the Lakers? Um. I don't think either team gets that amped up, to be honest. <laughs> if I'm in an arena and they are chanting that at me, I am. I am. Nothing is has me more locked in. I don't. I don't think. I don't think Nuggets fans need to be scared of the Lakers anymore. Like this is my whole thing. I think you're right. The I mean, Nuggets I'm, own the Lakers. They should act like that. I think you're right. That's a great point. All right, let's take a break. Last segment on the other side. How many players are going to average 13 points a game? What will the single game high be? Will there be any munders? We'll get to all of that. And then, of course, our official predictions <laughs> on the other okay. side. Think of what you're going to predict. Oh, man. This episode brought to you by Illegal Pete's. Check out Illegal Pete's. They got a new location in Wheat Ridge, Colorado. 
in Gold's Marketplace. Uh, that is on the corner of 26th and Kipling, overlooking Crown Hill Park in Wheat Ridge. A stop by. They're open. They got a bar there. Awesome spots to eat and hang out. Every Illegal Pete's location is awesome. And here's the shirt we're doing with Illegal Pete's as well. Stay on parade. parade. Uh, love having these guys as partners. We've done two playoff shirts with them right now. They've both been awesome. And it's easy for us because Illegal Pete's is great food. Great people. Uh, we love supporting them too. Uh, tons of locations across Colorado. We got one very close to the bar as well. So uh, check out Illegal Pete's, your spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. Uh, also make sure to check out Fubo. If you're looking to watch Nuggets, Abs, Broncos, sports, news, entertainment, movies, whatever it might be. FuboTV.com slash DNVR. You get 140 plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. You can stream it from any device. And you have per- perfect picture quality from any advi- uh, device as well. A uh, phone, tablet, laptop, your TV, doesn't matter. You can sign up with that QR code there on the screen or go to FuboTV.com slash DNVR. Sign up and start watching immediately. Don't have to install any cables, connect any wires, download the app, install it, boom, start watching immediately. Uh, when you go to that link, you can get 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. So tons of features, ch- tons of channels, a thousand hours of cloud D- DVR included as well. Uh, check it out. All right, we're back here. Final segment about to make our official predictions. But first, Kale, I sent you another thing. Do you have it ready to go? Um, we have the jerseys. for. We've been wondering this, what you're going to go. I will say, I love that the Nuggets love our favorite jersey. They did it last year. They're doing it again this year. Because it's, it's the best one. You're going to the Mile High City jerseys three times, games one, three, and six. Now, I will say, they're going to the 5280s twice. And then they're going to the Navies twice as well. No white jerseys the entire time, D-Line. Fine with that. Uh, white jerseys for me are, again, like there's just nothing unique about them. Everybody has a white jersey, uh, so it's there's nothing ownable in that. Um, but I would, if, if given the opportunity, I would replace the white jersey with the 5280 jerseys. Like, I'm, really? I, dude, I don't dude, want those this jerseys. this is disaster potential. I don't want oh, those, you don't like the 5280 jerseys? I don't want saying. those 5280 jerseys uh, yeah. in my life. Like, I don't want, this is, you know, again. Game seven. <laughs> it's like the COVID blues. I You're know, just going to have man. to learn to love them. I don't know, man. I've but never those loved those it. COVID jerseys are way better than this ship. It's they true. they might win. I mean, honestly, I have a. It feeling. will be embarrassing if they win the championship in that jersey. I will say that. It's true. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not I, kidding. He's right. That's going to be terrible. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> and I hope the Nuggets are thinking about that before they release their jersey schedule for the finals. I mean, but so you're saying like only wear it in games one, two, or three. Yes. Never don't after wear that. it. Yeah, just don't well, wear it. It's a terrible it. jersey. Just don't wear it. They gotta sell jerseys, man. They gotta. Well, they how get, many are they honestly selling? They got some. They have on inventory. They gotta get rid of, man. They're not bringing them back next year. <laughs> um, it's a catastrophe. <laughs> I'm dead serious too. What will be the single game high from any player? You can go Lakers. You can go Nuggets on this one. Hmm. Uh, you said a forty piece earlier when yeah. you were talking Jamal. I did. I mean, I, there will be at minimum one forty piece. I mean, Yoke's, Yoke's probably gonna have a forty piece. That's I know. I like. I don't know if that's the high though. Like, um, you know what? I'll say Jamal Murray scores forty five points. That's Ooh. the highest. Game one. I don't know. I, I don't know. Game. I don't game, know. Game. game one. Murray forty five piece would just. Uh, I'll, I'll say, sleep like a baby all weekend. I'll say Yoke's the high score with like a forty two piece. A 42-piece. And you don't think LeBron or AD gets that? Or you no. just don't want to talk Lakers? Who cares? I don't think they get that. No. I, I mean, There's a lot of big games. I mean, Anthony Davis had a 40-piece last year. Did he have two in the series, actually? Two 40-pieces last year? I think game one he had 40. Did he? I think he did. Hmm. I'll have to look it up. Um, I, again, you don't notice it when it doesn't impact the game. You're I'll just like, all right, what's going Empty on? Empty stats. Uh, I think it's Murray, too. I like your 45. I'll go 44. I oh, think Murray... Just- Price is right, isn't uh, well, he's, no, well, he's no, going to go for one dollar. Oh yeah, that is right. Oh, yeah, you got. Um, <laughs> how about this one? How many munders will there be? Oh, I boy. think this is tougher because the Lakers have a better offense and worse defense this year. Right. I think this might be more of an offensive series. And there were, by the way, zero munders in the regular season this year. Zero munders in the playoffs last year. So are you going to go with zero? I'll go one. One munder. I think there will be one. one we I haven't wonder. seen officiating like this since. You know, the Ooh, 70s. Great take. Great take. Yeah. Or the 90s, I should say. Closeout game will be a Munder. Yeah. AD did have 40 in game one. In game one, right? That's what I thought. 
Because I remember, you know, we've seen games before where Jokic outplays someone, but the other person has better stats. That was a game where nobody made that argument. It yeah. was very clear Jokic outplayed Anthony Davis, even with his cute little 40 point. Um, so, yeah. all right, one Munder. 21 like points in game four. 21? On five, on six to 15 shooting. All right. So that he only had the one then, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. Um, how many teams will, uh, how many times will a team score 120 or more? Last year, just so you know, in the regular season, it happened one time, although Denver did have a game with 119. I think they had a game with 124, a game with 119. And then in the playoffs, only once did Denver score 120. I think it's going to be pretty similar. Once. I'd, I'd say once. Yeah. I, th- I think overall the Nuggets are a slightly worse offense than they were last year just because they don't have Bruce Brown. And that's, you know, a guaranteed 10-plus off the bench every night. And the Lakers... You know, they're slightly worse defense, so the Nuggets could score about the same. That, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Um, all right. It's time for the, the big one. Totally. Who will win the series, D-Line? <laughs> and in how many games? Uh, remind me of the specific. Who's playing again? The Nuggets against the Lakers. <laughs> uh, Nicole Jokic, Jamal Murray, okay. Michael Porter Jr. Take Aaron all these Gordon. factors. Uh, I'm going to go with the Denver Nuggets. I believe that the Denver Nuggets will win this series. I believe that they'll win this series in four games. Another sweep. I don't, I've not seen anything to tell me that the Lakers have gotten better. They're older. Is that good? They've added <laughs> Gabe Vincent. Is that good? He, the Nuggets have played the Lakers many times where there was big lead up. The Lakers were talking all summer. They were having conversations. They wanted to win very badly. They wanted to win very badly on Kobe statue night. They wanted to win very badly on opening night. I don't understand why people think it's going to be different or closer or better. I don't I, like you can tell me that LeBron James will be less hobbled than he was last year. They won't they haven't have gone through the gauntlet of the playoffs to get up. They played the Nuggets fully rested, and they got their doors blown off in a series, a game that they wanted to win more than anything because it it was a gut check and it was something that they had been disrespected all season long. And I I just, I can't understand why people think it's going to be any different than last year. I just, I don't see it. Nuggets and four. Let's just talk about the implications. If Denver really does sweep them two years in a row, forget beating them. If you sweep them two years in a row... I'm telling you right now, no cut would be deeper for Lakers fans. It would be incredible. Also, LeBron getting swept twice in a row. My God. Vibes would be at an all-time high, man. That's why I was saying that the, and we're going to be a disaster as a fan the, base. The title last year in the parade maybe would be the only two days. Game five of the Heat series and the parade day might be the only days in history that would be higher than if Denver this sweeps like, them for a second And I'm telling you, like, should this happen? We already went through it, but, like, this is the ultimate, uh, and I put this on Twitter, like, the ultimate, like, a, a great poet said this one time, like, it, it ain't no fun when the rabbit has the gun. Is that Dylan? No, I, think, I think it was LeBron James. Oh. Um, <laughs> the Nuggets have the gun. The man in the arena. The Nuggets have been under the thumb of the Los Angeles Lakers for my entire life. They have ruined so many times for the Denver Nuggets. They have spoiled so many things, and they did it so gleefully and with such a, a shit eating grin at all times. And now that the rabbit has the gun, we are told we are supposed to be humble, we are supposed to respect the king, all of this nonsense, and the Lakers have given no indication that they deserve it in any way, shape, or form. So, like, until I'm shown otherwise, like, I'm not even a little bit nervous. I could see it being a sweep. What's your official prediction? My official prediction is Nuggets in five. Um, Would I be surprised if it was a sweep? No, not at all. If the Nuggets play up to their standards, this will be a sweep. And if they play up to their standards and there's no funny business, like no foul trouble, no weird officiating, I'm leaving one game for that. And last year, I also left one game for that. (laughs) <laughs> and didn't it never ride? I predicted Nuggets in five last year because of that. Um, so I'm predicting that again. But would I be surprised if it was a sweep? No, I wouldn't. This matchup honestly seems very similar to last year's matchup. It really does. I think you're right. I agree. I'm going to go Nuggets in five. I do think that a sweep is possible. I think 
six games is probably I, to me I would be pretty surprised if Denver lost this one I won't lie I'd be very surprised if they lost and if it went seven I would be pretty surprised as well I think Denver is the better team we've seen them match up like as to your point it, some matchups are yeah it was weird they got, they played them in February and there was that weird day they were all marquee games that meant something they carried additional weight to them and that first game in particular I know that was a long time ago but that first game in particular was like the Lakers calling their shot and Denver they beating the, them down so bad that LeBron looked like he was about to quit and again. retire. <laughs> yeah, he almost retired. He again. was mulling retirement again. And I think yeah. that this one, I, I just think the Nuggets really are better than this team. They and, are. And I'm with Win though. I leave a margin not only for the foul trouble, because I do think that Denver, foul troubles are real. We've talked about it earlier when we were doing that stuff. It's a real issue because Aaron Gord's irreplaceable, Jokic is irreplaceable. Yep. Anytime you have two guys where it's not like, we got to survive the next eight minutes with so-and-so. It's like there's no surviving that. Those two guys get in foul trouble. You're not surviving it. So that aside, there's possibility of that. And I think there's also possibility of LeBron carried them to a 15-point win in game four. It was too little too late. There's always a chance LeBron leaves it all on the floor for a one-off game that Denver ends up coming up just a little bit short. He does yep. not, in my opinion, have a full series of those games in him anymore. Last year, he didn't have a single game that he could do that for. It being round one, it's possible he has a game like that that goes three and a half quarters, maybe four quarters, you know, at best. So I'll leave it open to five. But I would, dude. That's the the, the craziest thing is that everybody, you know, we're entering this 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 series, this postseason. Like everyone's like, all right, we gotta, we can't be, like, we can't get ahead of ourselves. We can't look past the. Because it's so long, is why. No, I know. Um, but here's like one important thing: is that we're not playing. Uh, Nikola Jokic is playing. <laughs> so true. It doesn't matter what we think or what we feel. And uh, the Nuggets are, they're just a better team. They're just like, and, but the main point is like when everybody, even like in their, their smuggiest tone, when they're like, oh, okay, you need to respect the Lakers. We can't get too far ahead of ourselves. Everyone's like, Nuggets in five. <laughs> like that's well, sweeps that's are hard. The, you know, I know, but sweeps that's the sign, and... that's the sign of respect. Five. Yeah, 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 totally. It's so true. But I mean, again, Denver's played a lot of series. They've swept once in the Jokic era. It's not an easy thing to do. Now, who did they sweep? This very team they're about to play. So it's on the table. But we'll see what happens. We're feeling very confident, guys. Go check out Win's article. It really is a fantastic one to get you ready. A perfect article to get you ready for tomorrow. We're of course going to be at the bar. You're going to want to get here early. You're going to want to get here either way. Even if you're in standing room only, I'm telling you, it's so you're fun. not going to regret it. I, no. nobody, you know what I've never heard anybody tell me? I came to the bar last year, really regretted yeah, it. Total bummer, dude. <laughs> I've literally never heard Had anybody a terrible say that. time. Yeah, yeah, you know, I was at you the know bar what? for that game in the playoffs. You know what? I, like, have, if you've not been to the DMVR bar during the playoffs, it's, it, like, I equate it to going to a concert. It yeah, is. Yeah. It's a, we have a merch table. Yeah. You can buy beers uh, out of a tub. You can get it from the bar. Uh, it's like going to a live concert, and the energy is just unmatched. It's palpable. It's delicious. Makes you feel a part of it. It Yes. And it's it's just uh, something that is, is so memorable. Uh, and uh, another thing to mention, if you are a diehard, yep. you get in for free. No cover. I think everybody else, $10. Uh, again, these are so busy, they do sell out. $10 cover, unless you're a diehard. If you're Rich, a diehard, you get in for die free. you're a diehard, you know what you are? A homie, you're supporting us. We're going to support you. Get in Bring your for card, free, get in for free. Uh, all right, we got a couple super chats. I'll get it. Uh, Cedric, uh, please get special guests for any watch alongs, fellas. Well, guess what? We do have a special guest for tomorrow's watch along. You know who it is? Miroslav. Miroslav, who will get here <laughs> right as tip off his plane lands at tip off. So he's going to actually only be here for the second half. It's a bummer. He booked it. You know, can't believe I'm going to be watching a game with Miroslav. It's going to be the best. <laughs> We've actually never watched a Nuggets game with Miroslav. We watched, a, actually, we watched a Jokic game we with Miroslav. We did watch a Jokic game with Miroslav. Live. And it went yeah. great. It went great. It yeah. did go good. But we will have some guests throughout the watch along. <laughs> and uh, I already know a couple people that have reached out. We'll be on. Hell yeah. Uh, Nico Perez, five bucks. Thanks, homie. It might be a hot take, but the X factor for this series is neither D'Lo nor Jamal. It's MPJ. His rise has been understated. He will be the difference. Listen, I mean, great, if, great not, take. if not for everything outside of basketball, I would be completely on board. So I just, but you could be also be right. It's definitely on the table. He's right, though, that Michael Porter is capable of making bigger impacts than ever before. And yeah. you know what? We can start to really show that in this very series. Cedric said he had another one, Kale. Do we, we miss it? He did send another one. 
Do we have it? Have it? All right. Uh, Cedric the Exquisite says, kick Lakers ass back to LA. Even live mood says it. Well, I mean, live what do you mean Senate, even live I mean. moves? She's uh, maybe a bigger homer than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, thanks for hanging with us. Postseason starts tomorrow. Playoffs start tomorrow. We'll see you at the bar.